on This Week in Iowa, new information about Jerry Fox Hovind's firing. Then, Vice President Mike Pence tours a local company to talk trade. Plus, new crash simulation video begs the question, should Iowa school buses have seatbelts and marijuana companies having issues with banking? Hi everyone and welcome to This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed. We start today by talking about new details of a former agency head's request for resignation by the governor. This week we learned Jerry Foxhoven is going to sit down with State Auditor Rob Sand to talk about what he says was something illegal the Reynolds administration asked him to do. Foxhoven is the former director of the Iowa Department of Human Services. He was asked to resign by Governor Reynolds last month. A 2017 state law requires reasons and rationale if any government employee is fired or resigns in lieu of termination. Governor Reynolds has only given vague reasons, zero specifics. No, and I'm just not going to get into that. I just don't think that that's healthy and there's no reason to do that. Or does the public uh, have well, should, deserve out, to it, know kind it, of what you're looking at when you're making those decisions? No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I think it'll demonstrate if, if you look at the, the agency and some of the changes that we're looking at. So this entire situation is causing some concern for members at the State House, including Democratic Senator Tony Bizignano. Joining me now is that Senator. Thank you so much for being here. It's happy to be here. Um, so you and another member of the Senate Government Oversight Committee have called for an interim public meeting to talk about Foxhoven's resignation. Many Republicans in the State House said it's not really necessary. What's your response to that? Well, first, I understand why the Republicans wouldn't want the Oversight Committee uh, to look into this specific issue. Um, you know, the governor is, is evading uh, answering the issue, which, ironically, uh, she was lieutenant governor uh, when the bill was passed into law that required every public employee. Um, we, we have to know why they were uh, terminated or demoted. And uh, this falls within the scope of the law. Uh, she doesn't want to, for whatever reason, uh, to disclose why she asked for Jerry Foxhoven's resignation. And uh, it's just one in a long list of issues uh, with the Department of Human Services, the Medicaid privatization. So the Oversight Committee is where it belongs, uh, and I understand why the Republicans are, are shielding her and they ought to be open to the, to the public and to, to Iowans. So what would you accomplish with a special meeting like this? Well, in the Oversight Committee, we call people to testify. Uh, we would call Mr. Foxhoven. We'd ask him uh, what his version uh, of why he believes he was asked to resign. We would call uh, pertinent people that were involved in that decision or that action from the governor's office uh, or the governor and uh, ask them to explain uh, what uh, was the reason for his resignation and try to get to the bottom of it. Iowans deserve uh, an explanation and an honest answer. We're not getting an honest answer. Have you spoken to fellow committee members, Republicans, about your request, about this proposal? I've spoke to, uh, to other members. I haven't talked to other uh, members on the committee who are Republican. Uh, I intend to do that uh, to see if they're willing to have that discussion. But uh, this looks like a closed rank issue and they're making it very partisan when they do things like this, uh, it makes people skeptical that there's something to hide. So we mentioned that Governor Reynolds is, under Iowa law, supposed to give a reason for the resignation or request for uh, resignation in lieu of termination. Um, do you believe she's violating Iowa law right now? Yes, I believe she's violating Iowa law. Uh, she knows the law. Uh, they're the ones who push the law. and. Uh, there's just no justification to say this is an exception. To, to say to Iowans that we have no record, uh, that we have no record of this, this uh, termination, it makes no sense. I mean, there are notes, there are emails, there are phone conversations. This wasn't done in a vacuum with the governor alone. This is with staff consultation and maybe others in state government. So to deny that there is any record of this, at least there's a mental record. And uh, we want to know uh, what the governor recalls. So we have heard that Jerry Foxhoven has had conversations with certain government officials about this potentially um, being asked to lie by the governor's office. And now there um, is a meeting set up between Rob Sand, the state auditor, and Jerry Foxhoven to kind of get to the bottom of it from that angle. What are you thinking could have happened between that conversation that would then lead to this resignation? Well, it's a very serious charge. 
when the governor of the state of Iowa asked the department head uh, to commit an illegal act, uh, that's serious. And uh, Mr. Foxhoven, when he said that, um, you know, now he has to put up. He has to explain what he was requested to do. Look at whether it was an illegal act. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, the governor needs to be responsible. The governor needs to be transparent. Uh, and, and she is not a very transparent governor. And that's a problem. And so uh, we need to get to the bottom of it and move on. But we need to get to the bottom of it. So Foxhoven is an attorney. Can you imagine it, it, that he would ever flippantly make this allegation if you didn't think there was real meat behind it? Uh, my my uh, knowledge of Jerry Foxhoven and, and personal uh, acquaintance of, of, of him, uh, I don't find him to make a flippant comment uh, like that using the term illegal. He could say that we disagreed on an action that I was asked to take. Uh, that would be appropriate. You know, there are disagreements um, among uh, executives and, and, and department heads. But to, ask, to use the word illegal uh, really pushes the, the boundary, and that's what we need to get to the bottom of. We have about 30 seconds left, but can you quickly tell regular Iowans who aren't closely involved in this case, aren't reporters trying to get to the bottom of it with you, why should they care? Well, because Medicare, Medicaid has been a problem in Iowa for four years. Uh, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in profits that we're giving to the private sector insurance companies that are Iowans taxpayer money. And we're losing uh, the service to people who need it. And that is a result of the cost and what they demand for a profit. And so Iowans should care. This is one of the biggest budget items, billions of dollars mm -hmm. in taxpayers money. Uh, it goes to Medicaid. And, and Jerry Foxhoven is at the forefront. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge and we, we need to hear it. Thank you so much, Senator Pizzignano. We really appreciate your time. You bet. Short break, everyone. But coming up next, Vice President Mike Pence pays a visit to Central Iowa, a business this week. How, how he's using the backdrop to talk about trade. It takes years of hard work to reach an elite level. Every day, practicing and honing skills in every challenge, staying focused on the goal. For Local 5, it's being the best at telling local stories that matter to you. We're honored to celebrate student-athletes on and off of the field. We're excited for what's to come in the 20th year of Friday Night Blitz here on Local 5. We are Iowa Sports. I drive up, I bring people dish. I love it. Why? Because what I bring makes people go, whoa. Over 80,000 on-demand movies and shows. A voice remote that leaves them speechless. Live TV streamed instantly. And it's all getting us some pretty big awards, but my reward is that moment when I let them drive. Wow. Ranked number one in customer satisfaction. Dish, tuned in to you. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. The Center for Medicare Services has officially authorized new benefits Medicare Advantage plans may include. Plans may now include private home aids and rides to medical appointments. Most plans also include dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage. To get the benefits you deserve, call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly advised me that I wasn't getting all the benefits I deserved. They explained I could get a plan that includes dental and prescription coverage, as well as a new coverage for private home aids and rides to medical appointments. If you want to find out what you deserve, call the number on your screen now. It's free. You'll be happy you called. I guarantee it. Call to see if you can save money and get more benefits now. Don't delay. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-260-0234. That's 1-800-260-0234 now. From the capital city, you're watching This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed. Getting to the heart of what's happening in Iowa politics. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined now by Roger Hargens, the president of Acumold. So we'll get to the big news of Acumold this week. But first, Mr. Hargens, can you tell me what Acumold is? Acumold is a uh, high-tech precision micro injection molder of thermoplastic components 
for the microelectronics industry, medical device industry, and fiber optics industry. You have parts in iPhones. Yep. Well, we can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we, we're in the communication industry, yes. In the communication <laughs> industry. And this week, Vice President Mike Pence toured your facility. Yes. Um, how did this trip come about? You only had a few days notice. Uh, it was recommended that uh, he come to Iowa and talk to a high-tech manufacturer, and we were one of the companies that was uh, recommended to come see, and so we accepted uh, his uh, invitation to come visit. So the vice president's message was urging Iowans to contact congressional leaders uh, to act on the USMCA, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. So yes. how was that message received when he was here? I thought it was received quite well. I, I know our employees uh, uh, really like the idea because it's expanding trade. We currently and have been shipping to Mexico and Canada and to over 23 countries for many years. So a trade agreement like this is very helpful to not only our company but all manufacturers in Iowa uh, and businesses. And so talk to me about how important it could be for you guys. What would specifically it mean for it, your company? It, it opens up additional channels. We're working with a lot of medical device manufacturers where we produce the critical components and then we'll be able to ship them to Mexico for assembly. Mm -hmm. This really helps us in a big way for additional business. So how would this differ from, for you personally from mm -hmm. NAFTA? Um, I think it'll expand some of the opportunities today because there's a lot of, of the major OEMs that we service that have facilities there or will be adding capacity there. So you're kind of in this limbo state right now as you wait for Congress to act. Um, what does it mean for you to be in limbo? I mean, are, are you holding up your potential for growth or are you just kind of waiting to hear, waiting to see? No, we're growing. We're growing substantially. This will help accelerate our growth as well with additional markets that will open up for us. And what happens if it's not ratified? We're going to keep growing forward. We're <laughs> going to keep going forward. It'll be good. But I can see, not only for us, but for a lot of companies, there's going to be a lot of avenues of opportunity. I can see the agriculture sector being huge mm -hmm. in that area as well. How many, com or how many employees do you have at your company? Uh, just under 350. Okay, so with 350 employees, that's a very large employer in the state of Iowa. What, you obviously are, have your ear to the ground on what's happening uh, in politics because that can greatly impact not only you but also your employees. What are you hearing from congressional leaders as to why this is stalled and where what the future holds? Um, we haven't heard a whole lot from the congressional leaders uh, uh, on the House side, U.S. House side. But we have heard from the Senate side that they're very much looking forward to receiving it over there to pass. So talk to me about why someone sitting at home who's watching this, who maybe isn't the president or CEO of Acumold, who um, doesn't work for a manufacturing company, it, why should they care about this? Well, this expands jobs. Again, companies that are growing add jobs, and we're adding talent all the time to our company, and this will help us uh, add additional people going forward as well. So if you're sitting at home, uh, this would be something that's good for the whole state, not just for a company or a few companies. It's good for all the companies uh, that really want to grow and ex export more. I think this is really important for the future of Iowa and the workforce for Iowa. So what's your message? My message is naturally we'd love to see this get passed. I don't know why it hasn't been passed already. It makes total sense to me that this, this should get done. And as uh, uh, the people at Acumon said, this... Uh, this, this just makes a lot of sense to get done. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll take a short break, everyone, and we'll be right back. Coming up next, bus crash video taken in a simulation in central Iowa. We'll share the new data and what the researchers hope lawmakers do with it. Attention cancer victims who used the weed killer Roundup. A federal jury unanimously found that Monsanto's popular weed killer Roundup was a substantial factor in causing cancer. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you or someone you love used Roundup and were diagnosed with cancer, call the number on your screen now. Don't wait. There may be time deadlines to file a claim. Call 800-840-6442. That's 800-840-6442. I found out in September of 2018 that I have osteoporosis in my spine. As a nurse, I am aware of treatments for osteoporosis, which include medications with lots of side effects. I was excited to find OsteoStrong as an alternative to the drugs for osteoporosis. And in just a few minutes each week, building bone back and gaining energy has been wonderful. 
Visit our website or call today to schedule your free session. Sir, did you need any help? Help? Sure. I need some direction. Because the day I stopped clocking in, all my purpose went right out the window. And you know what came back in that same window? All of the things I didn't want to remember. Sound like fun, huh? Lonesome? Check. Can't sleep? Check. Drink too much? Oh, yes, sir. Fifty years after now, I'm a nice still can't talk to my wife and kids about this stuff. Sir. Sir. Huh? I just wanted to know if you needed any help. Help? <laughs> no, I don't need any help. I just came in for a lock. Veterans can have a hard time opening up, even to family and friends. Visit maketheconnection.net to start the conversation. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Take a look at this video. It's a simulation of what would happen if a school bus was involved in a crash and kids weren't buckled in with seatbelts. The demonstration was held in central Iowa earlier this month to highlight the need for seatbelts in school buses. Take a look right here to what happens to the kids who are not buckled in. So joining me now to talk about that video and the push for seatbelts is Chris Darling. He's the executive director of the Iowa Pupil Transportation Association. Chris, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, to get started, talk to me about this simulation video. Why was it done? Who was it done for? Well, we started back in January. Our board talked about we needed to promote seatbelts. So we first we wanted to see if the board was on board with seatbelts. So we voted, as a, and it was a unanimous vote, that we should promote seatbelts for 180 members here in Iowa. And we wanted to also share it with, with uh, politicians and with other uh, interested parties. So what we did was we also wrote a position paper that we posted on our website. It's a three-page position paper that gives you a pretty good overview of why we should have seatbelts on buses. When we took that out to legislators and people, we, we didn't get much. Really? <laughs> no. So we decided that we would, we would do a demonstration. Mm -hmm. I worked with Dave Hallman of Hallman Engineering in Minnesota, and we set it up for our, our 56th annual school transportation conference. And that conference is dedicated to transportation directors all over Iowa. And it's also for superintendents and for mechanics. So we had 241 people register for the conference. So what was the conclusion from that video? The conclusion from that video was fairly clear. Right. Uh, we we uh, let uh, Dave Hellman and his people uh, give us the stats, and we, f we found that students that were not in seatbelts were six times more liable to have a harder impact, six times harder impact than a student that was in a uh, seatbelt. And what that really means to people out there is if you are not in a seatbelt, and you, your secondary hit would be six times harder than the student. You'd have a six times better chance of getting an injury, I guess is the better way to yeah. say it. Um, so how are you sharing this video with? And since obviously you were looking for a better response from just those uh, sheets of paper, are you getting a better response from this? We're having a much better response. In fact, we've had several school districts that have contacted their salespeople and they've They've started putting seatbelts in buses that they're ordering right now. School, bu or school buses, though, are a aren't cheap, and to put seatbelts in them, on, in addition to that, is that's an inexpensive thing. It's an expensive thing, and I've had this conversation with different politicians and with different school districts. Uh, you have to break it down. Uh, putting a school bus, putting seatbelts on a school bus is about eight thousand dollars per bus, and it's a little higher for a larger bus, a little, little right. small, a little more economical for a smaller bus. But you also have to take a look at the lifetime cycle of a, of a bus. And that's usually about 15 years in Iowa. And if you break it down, it's like four cents per day per child. What parent wouldn't give up four cents per day per child to keep their child safer? So the Iowa State Education Board is meeting next month to talk about this seat pro seatbelt proposal. What is your proposal um, and what would it do? Well, our proposal would, would say that any bus bought, purchased after a certain date, whatever they, date they decide, would be mandatorily have seat belts on them. So well, that's that's our goal. Would it be retroactive? It would not be retroactive. Okay, so the proposal's been through quite a few steps. It's gotten the approval of a legislative committee and it's gone through two public hearings. Are you hopeful that 
the education board will say yes? We're very hopeful <laughs> and yet cautious all at the okay. same time because it always comes back down to the budget and in dollars. You know, but you have to take a look at child safety. Uh, right now, school buses are the safest form of public transportation out there, and compartmentalization has taken buses a long ways. Uh, if you take a look at when I started, you know, 35 years ago, there were still metal bars on the back of the seat, and kids would hit those oh, wow. and break teeth out or yeah. break ribs if they were standing up. Now we've got padded seats. We have went to compartmentalization. All we're saying is let's take it one step further. Let's put the lap shoulder belt on a bus and make them even safer so the kids don't have the secondary impact. And the secondary impacts is the one that's the most critical. Mm -hmm. Usually you can, the first hit on a school bus is the child, the child can survive it without any problem, without any injuries. But it's where they fly to after that first hit. It's that second hit where they hit the student across the hall from them, mm -hmm. or they hit knock heads with the student in front of them, or they fall underneath the seat like you saw students do here. Chris Darling, thank you very much for your time. Right, Good luck. You. We'll keep you posted, everyone at home, on right, what happens. Thank you. <laughs> we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Magical Cirque Christmas is a new holiday spectacular that will dazzle audiences of all ages. Featuring world-class talent, performing breathtaking circus acts, set to your favorite Christmas classics. Grab the entire family and experience a magical Cirque Christmas. Our son Arjun was six weeks old and already had his first intestinal surgery when he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. CF is a rare genetic life-shortening disease that affects every organ in the body and makes breathing difficult. At age three and a half, Arjun looks completely normal, but on his belly are scars from being in the operating room nine times, which can be a reminder of our family's daily fight to extend his life. Thanks to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, we know we are not in this fight alone. When the foundation was founded in 1955, children with CF rarely lived long enough to attend kindergarten. Today, thanks to the foundation's groundbreaking research, advocacy, and care, some people with CF are attending college, getting married, and starting families. But there is still much work to be done until CF stands for Cure Found for all people with CF, including those like my son Arjun, we will not stop. Help us add tomorrow's. Visit CFF.org today. I'm not in Kansas anymore. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? You represent a lollipop guild? You have no power here. Now be gone before someone drops a house on you. Follow the yellow brick road. Oh, I don't care. Because, 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 because. Oh, I don't care. I'll get him for this. And his little dog, too. There is no place like home. And for great TV, there's no place like Cozy TV. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Thousands of cyclists took over dozens of Iowa towns this week as part of Rag Bry. It's the Register's annual great bike ride across Iowa. Cyclists stay overnight in small cities and towns where parties and various activities are held. Now, when you're out on the road on Rag Bry, you can see some pretty interesting people riding. And this year, with the Iowa caucuses just around the corner, we also saw presidential candidates. Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper joined cyclists in Norwalk. He rode the route from the meetup town to to the town of Indianola with a group of supporters. Hickenlooper says Ragbri is a great time for him to connect with voters. The more time I spend in Iowa, I realize why it is, why people love it here so much and how balanced and incredibly wonderful the quality of life is. Hickenlooper made the most of his stay. He squeezed in a campus tour at local colleges and other events for his campaign as well. Now, another presidential candidate joined the Ragbri route. Former Congressman John Delaney hooked up with riders on the route from Indianola to Centerville. This was a really long one. Yeah, this is his first time riding Ragbri as well. He says he enjoys getting to know voters in a more personable setting. Well, I think the, the riders will be focused on the ride, and I think Iowans are really starting to dial into the presidential election. So, uh, you know, I, I think trade is a huge issue here. In Iowa, it's, it's funny, I haven't been here in a couple of weeks, and, I've, and I, I was talking to one of my team members about how much the corn has grown in the last couple of weeks, and it's a great reminder of how important agriculture is to this state, obviously, and this trade war has really been hurting the state. 
No time like Ragbri to see the beautiful countryside. Delaney's campaign arranged events around Ragbri as well. He's the only presidential candidate right now that has traveled to all 99 counties. Switching gears, recreational and medical marijuana is a budding billion dollar business for many states across the country. But in most instances, banks won't work with the cannabis companies. It's illegal for money to be used with banks because the use and sell, sale of marijuana is still a violation of federal law. Bankers and cannabis industry experts were on Capitol Hill this week asking senators to pass a law that would allow marijuana businesses to access traditional financial services. One marijuana company owner said it's a real problem for him. I had no choice but to walk into the IRS in Denver with more than $3 million in cash in order to pay federal taxes. Both the American Bankers Association and credit unions want change, but some groups say using banks would make marijuana sellers appear more legitimate. It is worth a mention that in our state, Medfarm Iowa has partnered with Bankers Trust, a bank out of Des Moines. They've agreed to work together, so unlike most marijuana dispensaries, Medfarm Iowa does not have to deal solely in cash. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Make sure you're tuning in to Iowa Live Friday, July 26 from 7 to 10 when we are going to be live on location at the brand new building of Merkel Retirement Planning for their grand opening. How do you win over fans? To give them something they love. Something no one else can. Something they can't get enough of. And then you give them more. Hurry in to see why Ram has the most loyal half-ton pickup owners during the Ram Summer Clearance event. Now get 20% off MSRP on select 2019 Ram 1500 Classic models in dealer stock. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore. And as winter finally lets go, I'm sure your thoughts are turning to outdoors just like mine. And we've got the furniture to make your spring and summer the best ever. We've got furniture from domestic manufacturers as well as imports, and I've got a lot of it in stock. We're showing 120 sets on the floor, the best we've ever had. Please come see us for your outdoor furniture needs at Fireplace Superstore. For great deals on great furniture, come to Fireplace Superstore. Your time starts now. This September. Coat. Wow. Jacket. You got it. The fewer the words. You have eight words. Wait, eight? <laughs> the bigger the fun. <laughs> Meredith Vieira host. Who doesn't know Tom Brady? I'm a girl and I know Tom Brady. You are brother. You should know Tom Brady. I can't do it. So excited to watch. <laughs> 25 words or less. Coming this fall. Thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. We hope you rag dry riders are recovering slowly but surely. And we hope to see you again right here next Sunday.